Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ESL Arena here at EGX 2017. How are you guys doing? You good? Yes, you seem very excited. Uh, we have got a fantastic evening planned for you all right here on stage. My name is Adam Savage, and I'm the host for what is going to be the Pokken Tournament DX EGX Invitational. Four players who are going to go head to head right here playing the brand new Pokken Tournament DX that came out just this Friday on the Nintendo Switch. Some new characters added to the roster. It's going to be incredible. And four players are going to battle it out to take away these fantastic trophies that you can can see center stage. Who do you think it's going to be? Let us know on social media. Let us know which characters you're most looking forward to playing with in the brand new Pokken Tournament DX. It's myself, we have casters, we have analysts, and the players. I think we get this show on the road. What do you guys think? You ready for this? Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's meet our very first two players. Firstly, would you give it up? Make some noise for our first competitor. It's Angel! My man. Mummy. And um, would you please give a huge round of applause to his competitor, it's Robs! There he is. Gentlemen, hello. Please do shake hands. I'll let you shake hands in front of me. Good luck to you both. Our first two competitors. Do go and have a seat at your stations, please, chaps. Good luck with the tournament. And uh, we'll be seeing you a bit later on. You can go and sit down at your seat as well. Okay, we've got ourselves a big, big match to kick us off. It's going to be a double elimination. Uh, I think we hand over to our casters and analysts and see what they make of this first game. In particular, let's head over to my man. The people say he's got the physique of a matchomp and the class of a Ninetales. It's Dan Gaskin. What's going on, buddy? Is that the physique of a matchup or a matchamp? I, I didn't really catch that. Regardless, my name is Dan Gaskin and I'm joined by Bowie. Bowie, this Ooh. is an awfully exciting uh, tournament that we've got coming up to us. Mm -hmm. Four players, two inv invited as far as I'm aware, and two indeed. qualified. Yes, indeed. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, how are you feeling about the tournament in general? Well, I mean, I know a few of, of the players um, and they were very, very well and very, very skilled, obviously. They've been playing, you know, since Pokemon Tournament came out on the Nintendo Wii U before. Um, and, you know, uh, there are five brand new Pokemon from that first to that, that second game. Four that were available only on the Japanese arcade and one brand new character exclusive to Pokemon Tournament DX. Um, and that brand new character is apparently very, very strong. So I think we might be seeing a little bit of that today. So it's going to be nice to see those brand new Pokemon, you know, played at the height that we know they can be played at. And I think that's going to be one of the most exciting thing, things for me, is seeing those characters we may not have seen, or Pokemon rather, uh, that we may not have seen in the, in the original uh, really come to life in this second one. It seems to happen a lot with a lot of games. Uh, there'll be a new update or a new patch, a new game, and there's a really strong character, mm. a really strong Pokemon yeah. that's just going to dominate the scene. Now with it coming out on the Switch then, do you think that's going to open up to a, a whole fresh new faces of players? We're going to get more people introduced to Pokemon saying, hey, actually I really want to play this game because now I could just play it from anywhere, play from an aeroplane. I, I, yeah, I think like the, the competitive like nature of, of gaming as a whole is going to you know become a lot more wider um, with you know the release of the N Nintendo Switch. As you say, that flexibility and that versatility of being able, able to play whenever you want, whoever you want. You know, you could just be like, have you pull out your Switch in a in, in a communal area, and then someone else has pocket. You just you know what you want to play. Maybe that won't won't happen in Britain. We're uh, <laughs> <laughs> very reserved peoples, but we'll you know. text each other. Yeah, exactly. uh, you fancy yeah. a game of pocket? Well, yes, why not? Yes, yeah, we'll go down down the park, have a nice <laughs> cup of tea, and uh, play some pocket as well. Maybe a pint if we're lucky. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> so. First two players then, Angel versus Rubs. I mean, what can you tell me about these two individuals? Is there a favorite here? Um, well, Angel, um, generally when he travels uh, outside of the UK, tends to place uh, a lot higher than some of the other UK players. So internationally, I think he has a bit of a, um, a lead, I guess, on the others. He has been, been defeated in, in tournaments here in the UK. Um, so we're going to see um, you know, if he can you know, pull out his best today and win. Um, I know that he is going to be playing, or he told me at least, that he's going to be playing Decidueye, which is our brand new Pokemon yeah. exclusive to um, Pokemon Tournament DX. And it, it, he is very, very strong. So, you know, I think if he plays that well and plays that right, although the caveat to it, the fact that it is strong and it's brand new, is that he may not have had as much time to lab it right now. Of course. So is he as experienced as he needs to be um, to take down rubs? And I think that's going to be the question mark that's going to be looming over this first game. Now, of course, you're talking about players using Pokemon that are powerful now with the, the new game being released. In other fighting games, 
we see players that will use a character that they like rather than that is the best. And like it won't necessarily yeah. be a tier one character, but it's one of their favorites. Do you ever get players that will just use like an old school Pokemon because that's their childhood favorite, for example? Yeah, I mean, I mean you said so you said yourself, really. There is a trend. Many players do do that. You know, they have character loyalty. Um, you know, I know many you know friends of mine who are part of the FGC who, you know, may not be playing the best char best character around, but you know their relationship with that character really brings it out. So let's get straight into this first game here, though, as Rubs and Angel Dark Song, full name, going to be playing it out on this first game. So Darkrai coming out from Rubs and Angel with that that Decidueye, as we said. First of all, opening up that phase shift and immediately getting. We're going for the uh, the dark shot there and facing back, you can see again zoning very very good, trying to find their way in very very nice, getting that shot and that land, but an immediate counter out from Rubs. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, Rubs really s s being like he's struggling there a little bit. You, you saw he was trying to keep his distance, but then he was just getting zoned completely. Exactly what you were saying. Yeah. As we move into the second round now. So yeah, I mean, Dark, Dark Rai, great at range. You can see him just zoning out as best he can, using a variety of different moves here in that field face, breaking into, into dual face now. Nice counter out there from Dark Rai, from Rubs. Goes round for the cross up and gets, tries to go for, for the grab, but gets the grab counter out from Angel. Good defense there, but getting caught again. Really nice work from Rubs right now. Again, goes for that. And these, these Dark Auras just causing so much issue. Trying to go for the aerial to ground now. But again, great, great evasion. Rubs is not standing still, and I think that's kind of the hardest thing right now for Angel to really deal with. Wow, a really, really strong game there. So that's 1-0 going over to Rubs. Strong, strong Darkrai play, wow. Obviously, the, the distance that he was keeping as well, and obviously using those range attacks seemed to really help him out. And uh, it was really struggling for Angel to get in. He was trying to, to get those close attacks going on, but it was just not working out for him. I mean, is there anything he could have done differently, do you think, in that game? Um, well, I mean, Rubs' um, defensive, or kind of like, it's kind of weird, like, you're throwing out a lot, a lot of options to kind of like force options out of Angel. I mean, he's trying to evade to the, to the side and trying to break in, but I think by conditioning his, his opponent to move, it's kind of like falling into his traps. Um, so, as we go into the second game, and okay, this is right, Angel breaking back, you know, he's good with Decidueye, but his, his original main was Blaze again. A character that is very, very strong with a huge combo move potential, but has the ability um, when he does use those stronger Pokemon attacks to damage himself. You can see as he's using this, his HP is decreasing there on the top right. Uh, but again, Rubs getting involved in this first round of game two. I think it was a good idea for Angel to change. Okay, there we go. Goes for Brave Bird, brings up the Togekiss support. And here, here comes the combo potential of Darkrai. That back with attack immediately opening up as soon as he saw Darkrai come in. And again, Rubs taking that first round in game two. Insane damage there coming out from Darkrai. As you said, I mean, the switch to Blaze again, I liked. I like him going for something he's more comfortable with, but still struggling to be able to put that initial damage in early on. And he's falling behind every single time. Yeah, I think that's kind of the caveat to. Um, Two plays again, you know, you, in order to be uh, dominant, you have to be very aggressive, but it does have these major um, implications to your own HP, so you have to be very, very careful. Again, he's doing a really good job of pressure in the corner, it's amazing, goes to the face shift, bounces off the wall into field face again, closing down immediately, not giving him the space he needs, but does get that grab counter out, and the combo begins, breaking into dual phase now. The burst rush is being used now from Blaze again. Will he get his burst attack out and will it connect? Go for a hit and takes that KO. First point on the board for Angel. Yeah, I like what you touched upon there as well, making sure he just closed that distance every time. We've seen Rubs just keeping away from him as much as possible, using those range attacks. It was really working out, but now we're starting to see Angel light this arena up. Yeah. I think I think his movement's a lot better as well. Like, you know, I feel like his decision was a little bit static. Um, you know, just didn't feel comfortable enough. But here, great work against the uh, the edge of the stage there. Trying to control the space his own way. Throwing out the odd odd option, keeping himself moving left, right, and keeping keep, keeping his own control on the ground. Well, there was the face the, the, the phase jaws, I would call them for now. Um, just catching base again. Gets the grab and out comes the damage as we say that. Huge, huge damage from Darkrai. Recoverable HP reduced now gets that. Cool. And here again comes the burst rush. Goes for the Togekiss support once again. The burst rush out from Dark Rai again now. Both players on about 300, 300, 200 HP. 
And obviously, burst attack are very, very dangerous. Did a lot of damage. There it is. He uses the burst attack. Will it land? And just getting out of that at the last minute. Really, really good there from Angel. Connects there. Does he go for the confirm from the burst attack? And he lands it. Will that be enough? That is the question. There's 94 HP left. It is not enough damage to take that down. That's so, so close. But Darkrai just surviving there. But the... the <laughs> but the control is in Angel's um, way. It goes for the very nice, the Umbreon support just there yeah, to push back. Angel's favorite is just, he's so ahead right now. And of course, this is so difficult for Rubs. He has to avoid every single attack while trying to push in as well and do damage of his own. But find, find some damage. Can he keep him juggling here? If he does manage to, this could be a great comeback. Still trying to get some ranged attacks on the go. We now see some blocks coming wow. out. And just out of nowhere, Rubs does pull that one out. Dark Ride doing what Dark Ride does best. That was really, really good usage of that move, just that phase back. You know, you could just see Angel was in that defensive mode. He had the shield up, he was just waiting. And as soon as Dark Ray pushed back and then kind of swung forward, the, guard, the shield was dropped and then the punishment came out. And Angel is defeated 2-1 and drops down into the lower bracket where he will be awaiting the loser of either Afro Kami or Galactosaur. Well, Rubs moves on through then. Uh, it was slightly, I was slightly confused at first when I was looking at the screen because it said Rubs and Rubs were facing yes. against each other. I think it's because they're using the, uh, yeah. the host switch, so yeah. it kind of goes well yeah. uh, based on one. But regardless, Rubs, uh, Rubs does push through and he will go through to the winner's bracket final. Of course, this is a double elimination bracket. For those of you at home that don't know what that is, you have essentially two lives. You can lose once, but if you lose twice, you are completely out of that competition. So it means we will see Angel again. He will drop to that lower bracket and he will play the loser of Afro or Galactosaur. So I guess now we can start talking about Afro and Galactosaur. Uh, what do we know about these two players then? Who's the, who's the um, favorite? Yeah. Well, in terms of favorite, it's a little bit harder. I think it's because we've got a bit, a bit of a wild card in Galactosaur because he's famously known amongst the community for being, you know, the random champion. He literally just kind of pulls out, out, out random. And even, you know, backstage now coming onto the stage, he's like, you know what? I might just hit that question mark. <laughs> wow. Um, you know. I know he has, you know, certain characters that he is fond of, but, you know, he's one of those all-rounders. He can kind of just get the basics of that game really, really, really well, and we'll just kind of see how, how that goes. Um, whether he actually hits a question mark or not, we don't know, but it, the, the point to make is that he does have a large breadth of characters he can play, and, you know, anything can come out. So that's going to have, have, I guess, an advantage for him, um, because in terms of matchup. Afro Kami doesn't, doesn't know what's going to be he's going to be coming up against, and that's really going to test Afro's knowledge about you know how best to approach any Pokemon that is pulled out by Galacto. I mean, going for a random selection is always a brave thing, especially in a tournament setting as well. It's all well and good doing it at home with your friends to try and show off, but when there's something on the line, it's very difficult. I mean, we saw the same with Angel in that first game. Yeah. He went for something a little bit different, a little bit new, like you said, and then he went back to what he was used to with yeah. Blaze again. I mean, do you think that that might be a situation for Galactosaur? He might first game, maybe go for, for the random and then switch to something he's more comfortable with if he, if he doesn't succeed? Um, I mean, that is kind of always the, uh, the comfort picks are always the, those things you want to do when you're backs against the rope. I mean, it's very rare that you see someone, you know, just kind of throw caution to the wind, really, and go for a, 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 such, such a left field pick. You know, sometimes that does put, you know, uh, your opponent on the back foot. But, um, you know, when the stakes are high, it's all about those and that, that decision making. What do you make? Uh, what decision do you make in terms of matchup? And then how do you play that matchup out? Now, obviously, we're here at EGX live. Oh, hey, yes. guys. Uh, for those that haven't seen, before. I mean, what's the community like? Is it is it a growing community? Is it something that we should be seeing more of in the fighting game community? I think um, definitely with the release of Pokémon Tournament DX on Nintendo Switch, it's uh, you know how how easily people can you know access multiplayer and competitive play like that um, might see a very very strong growth. The scene, as far as I know it, um, isn't you know in terms of the you know wider grand scheme of the FGC, isn't. You know, we're the biggest around. You know, there are some you know other huge titles to, con to contend with, but it's one of those very dedicated scenes. You know, they they love the game, and you know they love the characters they play, and kind of finding a new way to play a series as a whole that you know they've always loved, um, and the depth that it actually does have. Um, there's definitely something there for um, you know that scene, and you know it was seen at the Pokemon Championships, um, you know, last year. Um, we're probably going to see it, you know, later on this year as well. Uh, so, you know, there is that scope for it. I believe it was at Evo as well, one, uh, yeah. I think, like, a couple years back. But, um, you know, there is that scene there, and, you know, it can only grow from here. I think it's always going to be a nice niche for people as well. Like, uh, I mean, any Pokemon fan is going to go, hey, wait a minute, I can just 
beat someone up with a Charizard. That's gonna be like that's gonna be a pretty good fight. It's something you've always dreamed of as a kid. You've always dreamed of having like a pet Charizard that you could battle against other people, of course, and now you can you can do it, do it properly, but mm. with like more fancy moves and all of that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. So it's, it's the cinematography of the game is actually just as a slight slight aside. It is very spectacular, so it's got that extra wow factor as well. So and uh, what would it mean to one of these players to actually win this tournament then? Is, is this like bragging rights or is this something that they can really loom over the rest of the community? I mean, definitely these four players do know each other, you know, uh, they've always been playing at tournaments along, you know, all the time since, you know, the game first released. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the spe that one specific thing about the FGC, by which I mean fighting game community for those who yes. don't know what I mean, apologies. Um, but. You know, there are a tight band of, of people. It's, you know, runs on a kind of open bracket um, method so, like, anyone can enter rather than kind of, you know, having particular leagues. You have to fight your way through to get to particular places, to enter tournaments. You know, anyone can, you know, join and enter. And I think that freedom of entry kind of, you know, solidifies the community a bit more because everyone knows everyone and everyone's always seeing everyone at the same events. Um, so I think it's definitely... Um, it's definitely bragging rights, I think, uh, because, uh, because Angel, you know, who you know just went down to the uh, losers bracket now? He does normally play so well outside of England and the UK. Uh, but it's always nice to know. Oh well, he's doing great outside, you know, internationally. But you come home and you know who's boss. You know that that kind of yeah, different when it's on when it's on the home turf. And well, maybe we'll see him come back from the lower bracket. That, that's the beauty of double elimination yeah. tournaments, right? Is that you have those those second chances. All right, we were talking before this tournament even started about pocket and about the differences from other fighting games. Uh, I noticed the the phases. There's two different phases that happen during yes. the game. Can you explain to the viewers and probably myself a little bit more about <laughs> these phases and what goes on? Okay, so the, 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 the two phases basically operate in two different ways. You've kind of got um, two different fighting game m mechanics un under the hood. So dual phase is your kind of simple on one plane back and forth kind of fighting. Um, and then kind of when you if enough damage or a certain move is used, it kind of breaks and opens up into field phase. The game always starts in field phase, yeah. and you can enter into dual phase and vice versa. Um, and then the field is a little bit more kind of, you know, in the round kind of 3D movements. You can move left and right, back and forward. There's a lot more freedom there, but then the moves that you can use within those modes are a little, little bit different because obviously they operate differently. So you do have to kind of like have this single plane gameplay strategy in, in mind and then also have a different one when it hits the field phase as well. And do you ever see players preferring a certain phase? Like, does that happen? Because obviously both phases are necessary. I think it's... I mean, yeah, of course. I think it depends on the kind of strategy you want to build from that. So if you look at the game before, you saw Angel playing uh, Rubs when Rubs was Darkrai and Angel was uh, Decidueye. Um, there was a lot of, oh, the spacing was very, very good in the zone control from Rubs. You know, he was throwing out a lot of options, a lot of kind of like long range moves and, you know, kind of trying to follow where he was. He was keeping his distance as best he can, tacking away, getting those hits. And you could see that he was playing a much more zone based game in the field phase. And when he went into the dual phase, that's where he got so much more aggressive. And it's kind of, depending on how you can read your opponent, you'll kind of build a strategy based on what field, what phase you're in at that time and then kind of transition between the two. You want to be kind of fluid in the way in which you um, can transition. So, as, you know, as I mentioned, when you know, they broke from dual phase into field and immediately gap closed, so you couldn't get that distance to do the zoning that he was doing. Yeah. That kind of thing. All right, well, it sounds like we have the next two players ready to be joining us on the stage. So let's toss one back on over to Mr. Adam Savage. Thank you very much, chaps. All right, so. First Blood Rubs, but we've got two more competitors who are going to be on stage very shortly, battling it out. Should we meet the next competitors, folks? Yes? Good. Everyone seems very excited. Uh, would you please make some noise for our next one is Afro Kame! There he is. Welcome, Afro. Welcome. And going up against Afro, would you please make some noise for Galactosaur? There he is. Welcome, chaps. Please do shake hands and let's get it on. Are you ready to go into your positions, please? Your stations. Thank you, chaps. Uh, okay, it's back over to Dan uh, and the team to talk about this next matchup. Over to you, fellas. Thank you very much. Yeah, still here with Mr. Bowie. Yeah, still here. Still here. Uh, with, yeah, unfortunately or fortunately. Oh. How would you see it? Cheers, mate. I, I would go for fortunately because that is a stunning job. Uh, and I love your headband as well. Oh, thank you. Is that the kind of, is that your thing? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a branding thing, I guess. I like it. Yeah. 
from from where? Well, I mean, come on, tell us the story. Well, we want to know. For those of you who don't know the the origin of my uh, my name, mm -hmm. um, Bowie is in fact a uh, a character from a, a game that came out on the Sega Mega Drive Ooh. years ago. Wow, called Shining Force Two. The main character Bowie, um, who classed up into the class hero. I had a bandana. I like it. Everyone's got to have their trademarks, yeah. and I, I appreciate yours. So well, we're into the... What? Thank you. Oh, thank you're you. welcome. Thank you. It's okay, stop it. We're going to get closer gradually. As yeah. Just, we're, we're eventually going to be like in the middle. Uh, so second, well, winner's bracket semi-final, Afro versus Galactosaur. I've got to say, Galactosaur is one of the best names I've ever heard uh, in <laughs> my esports career, I've got to say. So you spoke before, and you, you spoke about how Galactosaur might just hit random here, and maybe it'll go against him, maybe it'll go for him. If he wasn't hit random, then what is something that you know he's more familiar with playing with? Because we didn't actually specify. Well, no, I mean, it's one of those things that I, I haven't seen too much of him myself, that's the thing. So, um, one of the, it more is one of those things I see, see the name pop up a lot when I'm kind of like looking over tournament results or kind of catching up, up with the community. So it's my first time actually seeing him play. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't have the knowledge to kind of say exactly who his real fav favourites are. Oh, I mean, of course, um, if someone's just hitting random every tournament, it's hard to, to work yeah. Out who is their favorite? Yeah, right? It happens sometimes, um, but I think you know. I, I do know that obviously Afrokami um, mainly a Sceptile main, but I, th I have heard that he has that interest in playing Decidueye as well, um, like we saw from Angel. But I wonder if he's going to, after seeing Angel perform not so well with the Decidueye, uh, will he go well actually, or will he either go go again for that kind of pride moment of you know what I can play that character better than you can, go for it and see how it works out, or will he go for his Sceptile, which of is um, you know his strongest character, I guess. Do you say all four players at this tournament are kind of comfortable in this environment as well, of playing in front of a crowd, playing on a stage? Because nerves are definitely something that comes into play in all mm. all esports, to be honest, not just yeah. fighting games. Yeah. Um, in terms of the actual stage, the stage size, I think um, in terms of its overall production value, this is, a I would say, different from the stuff they're probably used to in terms of the general um, yeah. kind of like community event, you know, going to your locals, going to your weekly, even going to your nationals um, may not be of this size, but I think um, the pressure is the same, I guess, you know, when they're kind of playing in those grand finals and vying for a particular title or vying for, you know, to be noticed or to be recognized as the player that they know they are, um, that level of pressure and the way it, it influences their, game, their play in-game. I think it's definitely something that, that they're used to. So whilst the spectacle of this is you know, much more and the wow factor is there, I think their in-game play will be as strong as it always is. Well, it seems like we are ready to jump into this second game. It's going to be Afro versus Galactosaur. If you missed the first game of the day, it was Angel versus Rubs, and Rubs was the one who moved on into the winner's bracket finals, where he'll be playing the winner of Afro versus Galactosaur. Uh, I, I kind of asked you about your favourites, but I guess I didn't get a prediction from you for this second semi-final. Who do you think is going to take it? Um, I, my kind of guess would be Afro Kami. Um, just because I think he's got those two that he's really put some time into and he's got a specific uh, strength and then the, the amount of time, the amount of labbing that's gone on to really kind of get that character under his, his control, I think the consistency might be there for him. Would this be a massive disappointment if he didn't win? If he was to drop to the lower bracket here? I think for him it would be. For him yeah. it definitely would be. <laughs> it would be a shame. Uh, it's always difficult when you come to tournaments like this as not necessarily a favourite, but as someone who's expected to win, you always have that extra pressure on your back. Right? Yes, of course. I mean, there, yeah, that is the kind of the double-edged uh, sword nature of that seeding. You want to hit that and meet that. So, a, I believe that's a crow gunk coming out of uh, Galactosaur. I would like to think, and there's a, there's a Sceptile from Afro Kami. It's a crow gunk. Um, one of the newer characters again uh, in Pokémon Tournament DX. He was available in the um, arcade version, so going to be quite new. Uh, considered, I guess, the trolley character, or kind of like the, the joke, not the joke character, but you know, like that character's got a little bit more of a uh, sense of humor. So, so far, really nice work from uh, Afrokami, just using that Sceptile to consistently keep that combo going, using these bullet seeds consistently just to keep Krogan at bay, getting that grab. Good damage as well, opening up to that dual phase. Slightly coming out from the support, going up here to kind of keep that distance back. Right now, um, Galaxal's having a real difficult time to try and gain, trying to get in. There's the grab, and that'll be game one. Round ma match one going over to Afro Kami. 
Yeah, Galactus Sword just not being able to engage at all there. Really struggling to put any sort of damage. You could see he was constantly dashing in, trying to get close, but it was just, as you said, there was so much damage coming out of Afro Kami, and he looks extremely comfortable here, and he's just emitting an insane amount of damage. Constantly, Galactus Sword is just dashing away, jumping away, trying to avoid all these attacks. That was an amazing going, uh, you know, knocking him up into the air, immediately following up with that aerial grab. It, it just, it's been really, really good work from Afro Kami just so far, using that bullet scene, that leaf blade, just to consistently keep pressure on Galactus Sword. Uh, the burst rush is being used and then, then immediately countered by Afro Kami. He's going to go for the burst attack, lands it! This is quite a, this is quite good. <laughs> if anyone's seen Frog Drop, a bam. <laughs> you did mention how he has a little bit more of a sense of humor. Yeah. Just giving him a nice salute as well there. And still, he's trying to put damage in Galactosaur, though. <laughs> he's gone for the uh, Crow Gunk support as well. So much better showing in this second game. But now, here comes the rush again. That, 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 that close down, keeping that combo going. Great, beautiful work there. Gets that ground out again. This is looking much better for Galactosaur. Of course, he's on low HP, but he's just doing a much better job of dealing with everything that's been thrown out. Nice usage of the support. Snivy knocks Krogan up, gets that grab, and he will finish match two, taking game one. Game one goes in favor of Afro Kami then. I mean, solid performance there from him. Like you said, you were expecting this pick. <laughs> uh, you were expecting him to perform well on this character, on this Pokemon, and he did in the end. Sceptile seems to be the perfect fit for him. The grabs were at the right time. He was finding them just at the end when it seemed like Galactosaur might be able to sneak something. He was just pushed away. Yeah. So I think he's going straight back into it, going for the uh, the run back with the Crow Gunk. Happy to stick with that character. I think he was yeah, getting a vibe for how he needs to approach that time in this particular matchup. Um, getting a, a trick, uh, getting a kind of control over the overall thing. Yeah, Galactosaur. Trying to keep his distance uh, originally, but now he seems to be finding his moment going in for some early damage, trying to get close in on this Sceptile. Does actually manage to get a decent amount of damage done as well. Gets that grab on as well, yeah. So as you say, I think he's just a bit more comfortable. Goes for the substitute there very nicely. Oh, wow. Just drops back. Rather than kind of like going after it into the counter, goes for that hit. Very, very nice grab counter into follow-up. The Crow Gunk support. Very nice anti-air use of Snivy there. Great here again, countering now. Here comes the combo, but he drops the combo there. But it seeds into the ground. Krogunk going for that mega punch. And then the sliding headbutt there. And then just tapping away. Just trying to keep Afro Kami honest here. Bullet seeds in the ground. Into the growth. Yeah, it seems like Galactus has the game plan of chip damage in this one. He's just trying to keep his distance, try and go for that poke now and then. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he tries to land, he tries to land the heavy. <laughs> he just kind of like walks up really slowly, winds his fist and just slams. One of the slowest moves in the game, but went for it. Afro Kami really struggling here. You can see he's only on 40 HP now as well. He needs to play flawlessly if he's going to win this, but actually some decent damage coming out of him. Galactosaur is going to be pushed up, but time up. And he takes it, yeah, takes that victory. I think that's what I was talking about. You could see this, that overall general knowledge of that game and how it plays immediately adapted to how he needs to approach this matchup with the character he's using. And that's just really, really solid, and that's why Galactosaur is so dangerous. Of course, Bok can be very fast, but only 80 seconds in a round, and uh, Galactosaur had that game plan. He wanted to just shut it out. He wanted to wait, use time to his advantage, and maybe he'll try and do the same here. Gets that grab out again, yeah. Knocking Sceptile back, and then immediately getting gap closing, stopping that overall uh, range that Afrikami had, had such control of in game one. Look at that. Great work. Tries to go for... Again, usage of support, very, very good, and that knock-up, a very interesting usage. Immediately fighting back now from Galactosaur. He goes again for the burst rush. The whirlwind coming out, and then the poison stings, but gets caught by that long-range leaf blade. Gets that grab out again. This is looking good for him. Knocking good damage there from that grab. He's got a little bit of burst gauge left. He may, may try to just kind of do as much as he can with it, but he goes for the catch. It's whiffed, and then a counter attack coming out from Afro Kami.
Now Galactosaur Z on the opposite end of the spectrum this game, only 19 seconds left and he's the one who's behind so he needs to be putting in a little bit of damage here so we will see Afro Kami go on the defensive ever so slightly. You can see he doesn't want to allow any damage from Galactosaur here. He knows this is easy, he just needs one more hit to be able to finish this one. Great blocks coming out from Galactosaur but finally a chop to the face does finish him off. And we're tied one to one in this second game. That's all he needs, yeah. And you can see Galactosaur changing from the Krogan to the Espeon support. Just noticing that Kro the Krogan support merely just seems like a distraction at, at, at this point. Jumping in, going, trying to go for that Mega Punch again, but uh, doesn't get it. Again, trying to follow up, up that combo, but mid drops it, goes for the Bullet Seed, into the Bullet Seed growth. Credit to Galactosaur, his game plan seems to be changing every single time. He needs to be changing these up. He's trying not to be predictable against Afro here, but Afro seems to have been studying and he's been reading the book because perfect performance so far in this game, getting a decent amount of damage onto Galactosaur. Yeah. You have to try to feel, feel, feel his way in there, but um, Galactosaur just kind of getting caught out there after the, uh, the detect hang was used. Oh, again, trying to just follow that up a dozen. Again, the burst rush coming out from Galactosaur with his Crow Gunk. Tries to land, gets a, uh, gets a stone throw, but the whirlwind doing, no, doing, doing less. Poison Sting coming in. He does see the brilliant Afro Kami whiffed his hit, and he goes straight into that burst attack. Burst attack doing plenty of damage. We saw again as well. Nice little salute's going to come in, but just 24 seconds left is going to be here, Bowie, but there is only 71 health left for Afro Kami. So now he's got to get on the aggressive because he has little time to work with. So Galactosaur should be in a comfortable position to take this game too. Oh wow, he gets the grab through the sniping. Really, really nice. Just completely putting down that lead with 13 seconds to go. It's not looking like it's doable, but Galactosaur with that. Sliding into the uh, close range, taking that game 1-1 one, one between the two. I mean, <laughs> is this going to be difficult to take for Afro, the fact that he's just lost one game against, the Gal uh, against Galactosaur here? Or is he just going to be like, yeah, whatever, like, I've got a read of this now, I know what your style of play is like. One of those things you definitely have to just kind of like just brush off, just brush that out of the way. You've lost the game, forget about it, don't, <laughs> forget about it. Don't, uh, don't, you know, remain there in your head, you know, get out of it, you know, reset the mindset and just refocus. Go for that leaf play, but, you know, waiting, Krogan with the defense. Just get a catch there, the bullet seed into growth, trying to follow up, very nice with that aerial leaf blade. Gets the ground as well. This is the dominance we saw from Afro Kami in the first game. Can he keep this momentum up and this pressure up? Again, goes to that guard, or the charge counter rather. In the first game, Afro Kami just had such control and Galactosaur was constantly on the back foot. And we're looking at a similar situation here, down to just 40 health now for Galactosaur. He has to avoid everything, play flawlessly. Are we looking at potential perfect? We're looking Afro at Kami? it, yeah. Espeon just goes to that defense and that HP increase. Gets the landing, he goes for the counter again. It's looking very, very close. 26 HP left, and it could be a perfect. Ooh, he lost a single sliver of HP there. <laughs> 10 maybe. But uh, a KO on the side of Afro Kami. Yeah, it was a perfect, yes. 55 70. I mean, perfect or no perfect, he just wants to get the W at the end of the day, move towards that winner's bracket final, move towards that grand prize so he can lift the trophy on the stage. Galactosaur needs to switch things up a little bit, does hit some decent amount of damage. And uh, I am noticing that these games are a lot longer than our first semi-final, though. Yeah, they're, they're quite explosive, especially in that first game um, from Angel and Rubs. But Galactosaur again, just doing what he needs to do just to... He's getting, he's getting, doing a lot better. Obviously, it was a, you know almost a flawless victory for Afro Kami in that previous fight. So again, this counter snivy usage just to kind of knock up and push back. There's the burst rush coming out. F your news, defense up HP. The Mega Sceptile out again as well. Wow, no defense there after the cross up. And then opening up that space, you can see there's so much damage. So many hitboxes on the stage. Does he get the land? No, he doesn't. But immediately he knows that because he whiffed, there's going to be a Krogan coming in, so he throws out another option and catches him. Yeah, great blocks from Galactosaur as well. So close though, Galactosaur is to dropping to the loser's bracket here. Some damage coming out from Afro Kami, just 22 HP. Can he find the extra damage? He can be patient here. He's got time to work with, finally sweeps and finishes him off. And it will be Afro Kami moving through to the winner's bracket final. Unfortunately, Galactosaur falls. And if seeing Sceptile wasn't cool enough, we got to see a Mega Sceptile in that game as well, so I'm pretty happy. The Christmas tree tail, very, very lovely there. Um, I really, really like what Afro Kami was doing and the way he adapted to the approach that, um, you know, Galactosaur had with Krogan. 
noticing that a lot of uh, the moves from Corrigan have a little bit of startup time and very, very punishable. He was countering using the Snivy support, um, you know, in the middle of that attack. You know, he threw out one, he just prepared the other, and then just getting pushed back. Um, and that was good for Afro Kami. As so he takes it 2-1 and goes on to that winner's finals. Let's have a look at these replays here. Yeah, is there anything you could dissect from these replays that we've got? Is there anything, were you surprised by any of the, of the moves or, or the performance from either of these players? I think it was the um, the speed of the adaptation from both players, you know. There was such dominance in game one from Afro Kami, like unprecedented levels of dominance. Um, it almost looked like, you know, you would think, is it going to have a switch? But he stuck with it. And, you know, in game two, as you can see here, this wonderful decision with that consistent <laughs> rock, you know, the, the rock roll there, just to uh, kind of follow up. You know, he was just reading a lot more of what Africa was did. He tried to shut down that that, that, that zoning potential, um, but you know, it was an immediate kind of change around from Africa again to kind of find his way in. He was using the Snivy much more aggressively, or well, defensively, but you know, converting it into an aggressive follow up. And should we be giving credit to Galactus or for making such a close game out of it, despite using maybe uh, a Pokemon that's not? top tier as such? Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially as I don't know his relevant uh, ability with the character, um, but he was really, really, as I say, just the adaptation that came out of that was really, really, really solid. Um, and the way in which he kind of just had to build around, you know, the, the limited knowledge he had, he had, I'm not sure if maybe he spent, you know, six months labbing the arcade version, I don't know. But, you know, um, he, you know, it was just very, very good the way he kind of like, built his offense from the uh, from you know realizing the way he was getting punished more than anything else in that first game and then bring it into you know that victory in game two yeah glad saw he was uh, just changing his play style so often it was actually really good to see it's a shame that he falls but he's still not out it's double elimination but now the next game is going to be the winner's bracket final it's going to be rubs uh, who won our first semi-final against afro who we just saw win there so this should be uh, a very juicy affair oh not? for sure yeah so we're going to see that dark ride back from rubs um, and see this Sceptile from Afrokami. Maybe he's going to pull out, um, you know, another Pokemon. Yeah, it does have a Decidueye here. Again, that same, you know, reasoning and that same context of it is a new character. How much relative experience is there? But also seeing the way that uh, Rubs dealt with Angel's mm. um, Decidueye. I think he's going to steer clear of that and stick with that with that, with that Sceptile. I'm really excited to see how Afro performs here, actually, because uh, his Sceptile seemed... Pretty impressive, to be fair, and I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for it again. Uh, of course, they have the support pick as a possibility as well, but we're going to dive into this game. This is the winner's bracket, semi uh, winner's bracket final. Winner goes to the grand final. Okay, so this game one underway. This, again, this wonderful combo potential from the Sceptile. You can see him just following up again, going for the anti-air burst seeds with that back jump, the leaf bait coming in. You know, you, this is what, what we saw from Rob in the first game, the, you know, the zone control from the Dark Rye, and then we're seeing that from out of Afrikami Sceptile, but again, closes down that space. He's going to maybe be making his way in. Yeah, Rob's already on the back foot. This is different to what we were seeing from his first semi-final, but now he's starting to push the damage in and get back into this. Just 127 now for Afrikami, and he's putting some damage in just so low. Rubs just needs a few more hits here. Rubs is defense is so strong right now. He's just holding on to the last minute. He's going to go for it, and wow, what a turnaround. The damage from Darkrai is just insane. So much. I mean, I think that first kind of, kind of combo he did must have pushed out about 250 HP, which is almost half of our player's HP. Can we see this same early damage coming out from Afro Kami? He needs to find a way to follow it up and actually finish off one of these rounds because it doesn't matter how much damage you put on early on if you can't finish the game. As Rubs is still trying to, he's trying to zone Afro Kami completely here, trying to keep his distance and then moving in at the right times to push in some damage. And this is kind of this dialogue between the two styles of zones. You know, the, the zone control they want to both kind of do, they're almost trying to neutralize each other, but also kind of break through what they need to, they need to do. Both characters, again, great combo potential. You can see the, uh, the those aerial dark nets just kind of like keeping a player grounded. It's such a huge implication on the way you build. Look at this, there's that huge damage coming out again from Darkrai. Afro can be struggling in this one. Now he needs to be on the back foot ever so slightly. Doesn't want to lose the same amount of damage he lost in the last game, but he's being juggled very comfortably here by Rubs in his dark right. His timing again is just so impeccable. You know, he saw that the uh, that um, Afro Kami went for the detect hang and just kind of caught him out with that hugely long range in that anti air. 15 seconds left. Got to be careful here now if you are Rubs. As he's trying to push in, actually, he's on 52 health now. HP is down very low. Afro Kami is going to push in, but. 
Just a little bit of recovery. Seven seconds left. This is getting tense. Wow, that jump did a great huge decision going into that Snivy again. Can he finish it? Oh, did HP really get caught by the birth attack from Darkrai? Wow. What One HP left, and they, this should finish him off. Yeah, so Rubs managing to take it in the end. What a decision from Rubs at that last minute. You know, I, I, I think it's very brave of Afrikami to go for that attack in that kind of close zone, but, you know, the burst attack does take presence. It kind of comes out whenever you go, you go for that, that input, as long as you have input frames, obviously. But the, uh, as soon as Afrikami got his Snivy to kind of attack, try to go in and follow it up, but the input was too quick from, from, from Rubs, and the Ultra takes it. Yeah, Rubs looking fairly comfortable here, actually, winning the first 2-0. And now, of course, we go into the second game now. He's the best of three, so if he wins this, he'll go to the grand final. Again, early damage coming out from Afro Kami, though. He seems to be good in early game, but seems to be struggling in the mid to late game. Definitely seems a sense that, you know, as soon as, um, as, soon as Rubs can get his way in, the damage is just so huge. So here, you know, getting that hit on his opponent, and then this massive combo, obviously, that allows him to get huge amounts of damage out. Knock up. Follow up, knock up again. This juggling is so insane, and then covers the jump attack, or covers the jump from Septile, and then wow, just such knowledge. The Snivy comes up, bashes, bashes Dak, dashes back. Wow, I mean, this is a sublime performance from Rubs. I mean, you spoke about the juggling. Any juggling in any fighting game is always an impressive thing. It's actually the first thing you really need to learn in any fighting game because there's nothing your opponent can do. Yeah. Of course, it's very hard. You can't block if you're just being tossed up in the air constantly. So very impressed with Rubs right now. Definitely, it's about just kind of extending those combos, maximizing the damage output, and not giving your uh, your opponent, you know, a, a second wind if they need it. Wow! Again, just catching beautiful usage of the nettles. The Lapras is coming out. Off she goes. <laughs> Try to catch the detect, but doesn't get it. And look at this juggling again. It's just coming out. So here, Rub has to stay grounded. And the thing is, he has no other way in because the li the linearity of that dark sphere coming through. And Afro Kami's just being zoned out completely here. Every time he tries to dive in, he's either getting juggled or just pushed out by Rubs. And Rubs might be able to find the last bit of damage here. Looks like he will. And he finishes it off. He will be moving on to the grand final. <laughs> A smile, though, from Afro. Pretty happy with that one. He, he, he doesn't mind too much. And uh, this is good stuff from Rubs. Yeah, he yeah, advances on to that grand final. We'll be seeing how it goes in the loser to see who will join him there. But that was AU. Dominant performance, 2-0 over Afrokami. We we saw Angel taking him him, him to game three. Um, I think because of the um, the way in which Darkrai likes to zone and the way that um, we see Septile also zoning, you see so much pressure on the shield here. But it was just so res like just resolute um, from Rubs his defense and just finding those openings again. That decision to go for that ultra or just the way to get that ultra at that last minute whilst Afro was kind of trying to get aggressive on him was very, very nice. And Rubs completely had his number in that game. He just was predicting every sort of jump that was coming out from Afro Kami. And the, the smile at the end of the game from Rubs just said it all, to be honest. He yeah. was he was comfortable, he's confident, now he moves to the grand final. I mean, that, this, this here is so important. That is such an important decision to kind of get that lock, open up that distance and immediately throw out those dark nettles. It just kind of completely shuts down all of the you know overall movement in the dual phase. Now that's that, that's a specific of the dual phase, as we were mentioning earlier. The differences between those two in that dual phase, when you have that very linear kind of approach and you shut off an option completely, they only have to move forward. So what can you do when you're firing these dark spheres through the center? You can't jump. All you've got is defense. And if you try to move forward, you're going to get get punished. It completely locks down all movement. Control is immediately in rubs his um, hands. Seemed like. Afro just run out of ideas a little bit mm. in that game. He was yeah. constantly trying to dive in, trying to, to to bridge that gap, and he was being shut down immediately every time doing so. I'm wondering whether maybe a Pokemon change could have come out after a couple of, losing a couple of those games. I wonder. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to say maybe see kind of some kind of just counter pick. Mm. I don't know. You know, considering you know maybe some of our players haven't had as much time with Darkrai because obviously he's brand new to D, to Pocket and DX after coming from the arcade version. How much no, how much knowledge do you actually have? Um, that is the question. We can see, obviously, Angel and Galactosaur here getting ready for their Losers Semis match. The winner of this will play Afro Kami in the Losers Finals. Um, will Galactosaur get his chance to have the run back? Or will Angel play, I think, everyone in the bracket? <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting as to whether we 
what we alluded to earlier about Galactus Sword just taking the random button. Are we going to see that? Are we going to see anything different coming out of him? He's going to surprise us, put on a little bit of show match for us. But uh, Angel is uh, giving a, a nice look across. I think it's to you, actually. I think he's saying to you, are you, are you talking to me? What are you talking about, mate? Just play, just play the game, buddy. He, the, just, there is a decision right out, and then the Machamp coming out from Galactus Sword. Uh, I, uh, to be fair, that actually does remind me, and Machamp is one of his characters. Okay. Well, I'm happy because I'm seeing one of the Pokemon from my favorite generation. You did mention this, yep. didn't you? Yes, you did say this before. Like, you wanted to see Machamp. Well, you know, he's the people's champ. He's your champ. He's my champ. Can he do a seismic toss? I'll be very happy if he can. Let's see if he does it. Obviously, op op opting for that bulk up very early just to increase that damage. Again, you can probably guess by the fact that he's got four arms, he's a bit of a grappler. Mm. Grabs are where he wants to kind of be. He's a grappler and he's trying to get close range as well, but actually the grabs are coming out from Angel instead. In this position, yeah, when, when Decidueye is waiting in the air, you know, and if, if an opponent jumps up to meet him, you just saw it there, the grab comes out. That's the strength of, of Decidueye, other than being an owl, which is awesome for himself. Wow, yeah, just catching out there, goes for the grab, he gets a few hits, extends those combos a little bit, but doesn't get the follow-up he needs, and then Decidueye immediately countering. Yeah, Angel really not allowing Galactosaur to get any sort of combo damage going off, and instead actually it's Angel that's pulling off all the combos, trying to juggle as well. It is doing an insane amount of damage. Galactosaur being chipped away at just down to 93 HP, but he still has to go on the aggressive. Just 20 seconds left. He needs to get in the face of Angel here. You can see Umbreon again just to push back that, that Dark Sphere, or the Dark Horror, they're very, very good at just kind of pushing back any any sense of aggression that was there. Goes for a Lariat counter. The Burst Rush comes out immediately now. Interesting position because the Ultra isn't really, really needed at the level of HP. He's got gets. Wow. Oh, he's going to run out of time as well. He was so close, just on so 7 close. HP. And he actually got a really nice block out. And I thought there was a potential comeback. If we had seen more time, there was always a chance. Yeah, I mean, it was just unfortunate that, you know, that, that, you know tanking the hit into the trade grab was really, really big. Um, but, you know, it kind of allowed, I mean, using the burst was a very interesting decision there from Angel. I think he just wanted to kind of have that pressure up. Um, goes that grab, big damage with a bulk up in, indeed as well. Closing down that space, pressure immediately back up. Nice counter there. And now we're finally seeing the power of that champ as well. When he does get close, does get those grabs, he can really chip away at your HP. And Angel is struggling to get the range that he wants here. And look at that! Such a instant. great response indeed. So much damage coming out of Machamp, which is, I mean, <laughs> which is you like that? You like yeah, that. I like that. And you'd expect that being a Pokemon fan. Excellent. Again, closing down that positioning, trying to get as many hits as he can, but there's that counter coming out from Decidueye. Again, that aerial dominance just kind of hovering there. You just don't know what, you, what, you know, what option you can do. You can try and maybe fight against it, but here comes a massive combo coming out from Angel with that Decidueye. Breaking into dual phase now. Jumping over, goes for the cross up, but waits a little bit too long so that counter Lariat can come out. Umbreon is called. Galactus doing a very good job of waiting to go in. Galactus does seem to be doing better in the dual phase, but actually he dives in and it gets countered, and now he's struggling just on 163 HP. Angels will be able to put a lot of damage here. Galactus on the back foot, trying to get in, trying to do damage of his own. But look how much damage he does when he get, actually connects with one of those hits. Bowie, and now we see Burst come out. Yeah, the Burst Rush is being used now. That's a good thing. The amazing, one of the amazing things about uh, Decidueye is that his... Um, his hit confirm into um, Burst Attack is so quick. There's the Ultra coming out, the Burst Attack coming out, and he lands it, the Ultra from Machamp. 1,000 punches. Excellent indeed, and actually that means he takes game one here, two to one over Angel Machamp, proving why he is the champ. <laughs> Didn't he used to wear a belt? Is he wearing a belt in this? You, you know one of those details that you just completely immediately yeah. forget about as soon as the image you know, turns away from them? I think he is. I think Machamp was one of my favorite characters throughout all of the Pokemon series, actually. So I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to shake Galactosaur's hand later, just for, for it, yeah. bringing him on the stage today. But the chances of me seeing my favorite Pokemon are very, very low. It's a support character in, in this game. Ditto? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Miss Magius, if... Uh, you must know. Okay, again, going back to that comfort pick of the Blaziken, I like it. Sticking with, with, with the Machamp, I think you can definitely see a trend, at least, from Galactosaur that it's not a random every single game. He'll pick a random, he'll pick a random for a set, and he'll stick with that for a set leg. There, there you go with those lovely 
combos coming out from Blaze again. Gets that counter out. Well, basically, Angel has said here, oh, you want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you want to go close and try and do some real damage and try and go for those grabs. Well, I'll take Blaze again, and I will absolutely smash him in the face. So, again, but the counter, you can see that the, the damage is, even though that was the first hit that um, Galaxo got on Angel, look at the damage he's down to because of that, of that self-inflicted damage that is there. Which is why when you're with Blaziken, you want to take a support either with increases defense or kind of gives you that HP recovery because of that recoverable HP that is just kind of flashing there. Well, Galactosaur is down to just one HP, but he's somehow on the defensive here and trying to put some, some damage into Angel Dark Soul. Oh, that's not good. Find it somehow. He was on one HP, Bowie. One HP. Again, Galactosaur is pulling out these clutch victories. Uh, you know, whilst I was talking about you know the, the way you want to kind of build Blaziken, we saw this very, very consistent aggression and just found is managing to find those small openings, his opportunities to get the damage in. Absolutely unreal stuff from Galactosaur. He's now just one round away, of course, from moving on towards the loser bracket finals, and the sweat's gonna start dripping down Angel's head now. He needs to change something up. He was finding a lot of damage in the last game, but just couldn't find that last slither of hope. The, uh, the, uh, the hitbox of the particular counter there is not kind of working out for him. Does get a few hits out there, but the bulk up still on the chat. The damage is gonna be huge from this grab. Yeah, down to just 253 HP now, Angel, and he's instantly just smashed into the wall as well. He needs to try and escape, try and get some distance, so he does use the burst, as you previously alluded to. Wow, it puts a little there. bit of damage from himself. Because he's going to be falling down from that uh, wall. He does get the burst attack confirmed. Really, really nice using that wall just to get that. And the damage out is big. So, a slight lead now for Angel. He's got the speed up, he's got the attack up. But Galactosaur has been in this position before. He's gone onto the defensive. He's regained a little bit of HP here as well. Uses the burst, trying to get into a close range so he can do that crazy damage the matchup does. That's not good. There's there an option decided, but it is the defensive shield. Very good option there from Angel Dark Song. The scary face coming out. He goes for an anti air. 9 HP takes it back. Angel with a split second decision for the anti air. What a series we have here in the loser bracket semi finals. Angel, one round from elimination, but if he can take one, then we will go to the third match here. This matchup once again is trying to get that close range. Nice spin there. Counter Lariat, yeah, doing a really, really good job. Goes to that Brave Bird option, but again, the counter, the defensive options here from the Galactus are so good. And they're here, it is. That is the extensive combos you want. This is so good, though, from Galactus but we saw this position before. It, it, it is possible to have that recovery. How smart are you going to play your defense in this scenario? Now look at Angel Dark Song. He was running, he was trying to escape, but Matchup just keeps on coming on in, pounding with those giant fists. He's got four of them down to one HP now, Dark Song. He goes out and he gets hit even by a fly, but somehow he's still surviving this one. He goes for the burst rush immediately. He can't, I think he, at this point, he can't afford to be defensive. He's got to do something he needs to do. Gets that grab, HP coming down. It's in his favor. The burst coming out to counter that attack. Oh, and he goes for the rock throw. That, the AOE of that landing attack. This is dangerous positioning. He goes for the shield. Okay, he's safe now. Togek is coming out. There it is. He goes for the movement in, but the... <laughs> Finally, those rocks are able to do the damage. Galactosaur is the one who moves on to the loser bracket final. Unfortunately, it's the end of the road for Angel, but he did put up a good fight. Uh, it, was, it seemed like he wanted to bring something a little bit different to this tournament. As soon as he went one down, he trained, changed to more of a comfort pick onto the blaze again. Wow, yeah. And then yeah, you can see him like really, really, really fighting back. He lost that first game, you know, because that incredible passage of play from uh, Galacto. We're just going to have a check into with this first game here, with this Decidueye being used. We just got. I, I want to throw back to that moment where Galactosaur was down to just one HP and managed to block three attacks and then regain some health and then just start absolutely pummeling Angel. Mm. It was insane. That was a very, very nice catch on that. You know, he saw the decision to come in and then just punished and that was so huge. Going for the cross up and then following up with this wonderful technical string from Decidueye. Didn't land any of the burst hits. The burst attacks out, but it was really, really well played, trying to find those hit, and this is just where he got, got that catch on that burst attack. And the damage is just obviously huge from a bulk, a bulk upped burst attack, my champ. Yeah, it's not fair. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not already fair. not fair that he has four fists, but when he uses even more fists to punch you in the face, you're like, where are they coming from? 
Uh, but overall, a solid performance from Galactor. I'm wondering whether maybe we should have seen Angel just go with Blaze again from the get-go, and maybe he could have had a better read of Galactosaur's match up from the first match. Because it certainly, he certainly seemed more comfortable when he, he switched over. Yeah. I think then there's this, this dominance towards the end. You can see the zone control, you know, he forced that movement because, like, if, he, if he, he, he can just sit at range and throw rocks all day, and then what can Angel do? Angel had to make a, a d decision. So, you know, to, that decision to kind of push in and, you know, try and find the way there. A little bit too late for him, unfortunately. Managed to cancel out of the rock throw into, um, into that, that punch that caught him eventually, that cost him that game. That was really, really, really well played by Galactosaur. It was a 2 0, but it definitely didn't feel like it either. No, it was a very close affair, as you said, rocks for days, but now Galactosaur <laughs> moves on and he will face off against Afro in this loser bracket final. Winner will go into the grand final and will get that second shot at Rubs. Of course, it would be the first shot for, uh, against Rubs if Galactosaur is able to get there. Yeah, we have a run back here from that winner's semis that we saw earlier where Afro Kami took it 2-1 over Galactosaur. Galactosaur playing that Crow Gunk that we saw. Um, so, you know, against the Sceptile, what will I mean? Because you know, he, okay, he had, you know, he didn't have success with the crow gunk. You know, is he just going to go random again, or is he going to pull out that um, champ we saw? Will we, you know, have that crow gunk again? Um, where does his um, decision come from? Well, he's gazing to the skies, maybe hoping someone will tell him. But you've got to do this on your own, buddy. You've got to decide. I think Machamp he looks a lot more comfortable on. To be honest, he's performing very well, but. It's where the mind games come into fact. You've got an idea of what your opponent's going to play, and Galactosaur's well. gone for something different again, again. Weavile. So Weavile, um, very, very interesting Pokemon. Very, very quick. Has a lot of lovely options in the air and, and on, on the ground. Great combo potential with the Fury Swipes. Um, the Icicle Crash, again, can be used both grounded and in the air. So, you know, this kind of... Conv this versatility in the way in which you can kind of build up um, a strategy is very interesting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, be watching this Weavile as intently as I can. Um, here comes the Furious Watch immediately out at, at the start there. Gets that grab. Agility and bam! Yeah, substitute being used at the last minute there by Afro Kami. There's the Icicle Crash coming into the ground. So you, you can aim it down, you can aim it forward. That, that, that's kind of the beauty of it. It's up there for you. But out comes... The comboing again from Afro Kami. This is the thing, despite the early damage from Galactosaur, there's very little damage. And as soon as Afro Kami is not able to get any sort of attacks, it's just chipping away so much of Galactosaur's life over. Yeah, that is a kind of consistent thing when it comes to fighting games, you know, that your fast characters generally tend to be a, a little bit weaker at least. Goes, wow. Kind of, that was just a decision made, really. He just decided he wanted to go for the uh, the burst rush, rush attack, and it just, it just maybe reading that Sceptile's coming in, but he didn't. I mean, and quite rightly, the little characters shouldn't do as much damage, but Galactosaur's struggling here. He's being juggled about very comfortably by Afro Kami. He's got so much health to work with as well. He should be able to take this first game unless anything goes drastically wrong here. Galactosaur really struggling to find any sort of damage onto Afro Kami. Now down to just six. Make that one. That's going to be game. First round going towards Afro Kami. You can see, though, that there were moments from Galactosaur where he was just using the ice crash just to kind of you know, get some nice hits. Fury Swipe does not connect and he gets punished for it with that tail swipe there. What a very nice usage of the Detect Hang to keep himself safe from the, from the Ice Cool Crash. Get that grab again. Big damage. Just... This is the thing, Galactus is just not finding any sort of damage. Even when he's getting close and he's getting those connects, it's not like he's whipping, he's just not putting the, any sort of damage into Afro Kami. Finally, we see something happen, but he's not getting any sort of combo potential. So the burst comes out, and now he pushes in, jumps. But great blocks from Afro Kami, he's doing really he well. Jumped, yeah, really nice. So he read that jump. Well, uh, is it a read? Is it a guess? I don't know. But he just managed to get the catch from that burst attack. And that's the amount of damage he's done from that. Detect, used, and then he goes for the follow up with that burst attack, but it does miss. And Ivy. Being used gets the grab and Snivy is dissipated. All right, finally starting to see a bit more damage come out of Galactosaur, but we know full well as soon as Afro Kami connects with any sort of combo, that could be the first map going towards Galactosaur here. Yeah, they're getting that grab there. You see, there was a, a, a grounded option that I haven't seen yet until this point from Galactosaur, and that is using the grounded ice crash, throwing out, out, out the ice cores and controlling the zone. They have like a little trap on the property. But look at this combo! from Afrokami taking that first game 2-0, one to him now.
It's literally just took the words out of my mouth. That was absolutely insane. It, as soon as we saw Galactosaur, it looked like he was going to be able to get back into that first match. We just saw the damage, the insane damage potential coming out of Afro. It was just unreal. He just manages to land that combo. Nice juggling against the wall there as well. No escape possibility, unfortunately, for Galactosaur. And he, I think he'll probably switch up, if I'm honest here. From what I've learned of Galactosaur today, I think he might switch. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a very, very difficult matchup there just because of the range, that, or at least the way in which um, Afrokami was approaching mm -hmm. um, that matchup. You know, we saw moments from Galactosaur, as we said, where he managed to get the hit. Yeah, they were a very, very good shout from you there, Dan. Very nicely done. The, the Mewtwo comes out, and we're going to see how he can, what he can do with the, with Mewtwo against this Sceptile. Now, my childhood would suggest Mewtwo is going to win this one comfortably, but you know, it doesn't work like that when it yeah. comes to video games. Never, it never does. But again, you can see some massive range breaking through that shield and opening up dual faith immediately. Shadow Ball into the ground. The set there, very nice use of, usage of the um, substitution just to kind of get around the back and the combos can begin from Sceptile. This is the main difference I've noticed between these two players. Afro Kame, who is clearly maining the Sceptile, he's got those combos down to a T, whereas Galactosaur keeps switching characters about. Yes, he can find those occasional hits, but he hasn't really got those combos locked down. He was performing very well on that champ, but he's struggling again once he's with Mewtwo here. Afro is doing a very, very good job. Again, his wall pressure so nice. Get that grab, it'll be good damage. Will it be enough to finish it off? No, 14 HP left. The wall bounce there from the field shift. Litten is being used. Gets some damage out now. Can he find his way in? Tries to follow up, but... Okay, there we go. Nice knock up from the, that, that shadow punch. Burst usage to kind of push back. Uses the ultra as well, and it's immediately kind of guarded. Find Galactosaur on one HP once again. Anything, Ooh. even a little bit of a of a wind blow would knock him out, and there we oh, have man. it. He jumped up, used the shadow ball, but just at that point we had the detect leaves, the detect growth come out on that floor, and just landed into a trap, knocked him for like a little bit of damage, and allowed Afrogo to finish off. I was going to say even a leaf would kill him, but actually uh, there's a lot of leaves that come out from Sceptile anyway, so <laughs> it would be quite appropriate. Indeed, you are correct. A leaf would kill him. Very nice, that the detect use, just to get that grab and that hit. Afrokami keeping a decent range here, actually. Uh, surprising, because Mewtwo seems to have some decent range of attacks, but it's fine, because Galactosaur is the one who is getting damage, just pummeled into his face by Afrokami. Reminder that if Afrokami does win this one, he will be the one moving on to the grand final to have that rematch. But finally, we see Galactosaur push some real combo wow, damage yeah. in here. That was a really nice string there. Poppy being used. We'll support the, bu the bubble beam there. Black Saw struggling down to 177 HP. Burst coming out now from Afro Kamin. He is pushing in, trying to finish this one off. Down to 69 now. Great the damage. The Gets the grab. So close, just 9 HP. As I said, a leaf will kill him now. Mewtwo's trying to get away. Oh, and immediately just goes to that leech seed, and that's enough to take it. Afro Kamin 2 0 on Galactosaur. He'll move on to the grand final here at EGX Birmingham. We've had an amazing weekend here at EGX, the ESL Arena, and I think it's quite right that we finish this off with an amazing grand final as well. Sure, Rubs sure. versus Afro, we get the rematch from the winner's bracket final. The real question is, can we see something different from Afro here? Rubs really had his number in their original match. Do you think maybe we'll see a switch up from Afro? Is he going to stick it out? Considering the um, you know the fact that he has a variety of characters he can use and he's been sticking with that Sceptile, I think, you know, I don't want to say that the, the beating from Rubs was so severe that he'll immediately switch up. Maybe he's just going to have to kind of think again, rethink his game plan um, to kind of approach Rubs. As we do look at some of the highlights uh, from the loser's bracket final where Afro Kami was able to knock out Galactosaur. It's a shame to see Galactosaur go. I've been impressed with his range of Pokemon that he's able to play. But in the end, it's those that have really practiced their Pokemon and they have their mains that have shined today here at EGX Birmingham. Mm, for sure. I mean, these, these players have been like playing all day as well, kind of in this overall bracket. And it does kind of come to a head here. And it's in, maybe if they were playing previously in, in the bracket against each other and, you know, there are wins and losses going left, left, right and centre. But it comes down to that one play and, the, you know, that one game that you have to win. Who's the best on the day, I guess, is that most important, important, important thing. And on this big stage, which is lovely. And now, I mean, you may not know, but I'm a, with, usually with double elimination brackets, when someone has beaten someone in the upper bracket and they play them again, 
in the grand final, they usually have an advantage going into it. Is it just, is it back to normal? Are we just, is it best of three wins this grand well, final? No, it's not. I, 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 as far as I'm aware, I believe we're playing best of five. Um, but of course, we do have Afro in the loser's sights. And if he wants to win, he needs to win twice um, to do this. Rubs only has to get those three victories, but you know, he needs to knock Rubs into the loser's bracket first, get the bracket reset, and then go, go, go again. One of those things about the loser's bracket runs is they're really tiring. You have to play so many more games. You have to play double the games. A win in winners is worth two in losers. So much less games in winners, you know, to kind of get to that end. But when it comes to that grand final, you spent all that time and all that energy making your way through losers, and then you have to kind of like win two whole sets against the person who beat you in that winner's side. Yeah, double elimination brackets can be very tiring. Uh, sometimes it can be an advantage dropping to the loser's bracket because yeah, more, if more you, time. Yeah, you get more time to, well, rehearse as it were, you get to practice, you, you warm up a little bit and you're, you're used to what you're playing in the tournament. Whereas you've got the, the guy that's basically smashed the competition in winner's bracket, sat in the grand, grand final, maybe goes a little bit cold because he's not warmed up as much yeah. and potentially you could throw it away. But that's why they have that advantage, of course. Everyone has two lives and it would be unfair if it was all reset for a grand final exactly. because they need to lose twice as well if they're going to lose the tournament. But regardless, it is Rubs versus Afro. I'm going to ask you for a prediction again of who you think is going to win. Um, just based on from what we've seen from Rubs versus Afro, Rubs has been absolutely phenomenal on this dark ride. The damage output has been insane. The way in which he's juggling and shutting down options from his opponent, especially Afro's Sceptile. Unless we see a character change, I'm seeing Rubs all the way. And it, what is it about dark ride that makes him such an amazing Pokemon? I mean, what, what is it that is just dominating this pocket tournament? From what we've seen so far, at least, yeah. um, definitely. Um, the, the, the damage is damage. I think whatever damage is, it's it's damage. You know, players have you know swings and round roundabouts around that to kind of like balance that out. Um, but definitely, I you know I have mentioned it earlier, but especially in dual phase, the way that Rubs has been using those you know the the dark nettles just above to kind of lock out an entire movement option, and when you only have two, which is forward or four four forward and back as a pairing of movement and jump to can take away your jump completely. Yeah. Which in you know in the overall you know especially Sceptile you know because he has that that detect hang and he can stay in the air for a little while. Well, uh, sorry to cut you off. No, go for here, it. but it seems like we are ready for the grand final. So I think Adam Savage, it's time you introduce our players to the stage once again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So it all comes down to this: the grand final of the Pokémon Tournament DX EGX Invitational. Are we ready to meet our finalists? Yes, yes we are. Uh, first up, make some noise. It's Rubs! There he is, alrighty. And taking on Rubs in our grand final, it's Afro Kamei! You have your finalists, gentlemen. Please do shake hands and do take your stations. This is it. It all comes down to this. So exciting. Let's head back over to Dan and the team for all the action coming your way. You are the team, Bowie. I was gonna say, yeah. You're just, Welcome back to Dan and the team. You're, I mean, you're <laughs> that good. You are a full-on team. That's that's quite a compliment. I like it. Thank you, so, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, Afro now, for me, I feel like he has such an opportunity here to try something a little bit different. Yeah. For he sure. can say, all right, Maybe I'll try and surprise Rubs. If it doesn't go right in that first game, then hell, I'll just change. I'll change back to something I'm more comfortable with. But I'd like to see him go for something different. Whether he will remains to be seen. I mean, you got you know these players better than I do, but we'll see. Maybe we'll see something different. I mean, as I said, I mean, as, for, to my knowledge, this is a, base, a best of five. So you know, more margin for error, let's say. Despite the fact that you know, if you do have to do the run back, if you're two zero down, you have to do the reverse sweep. You have to play even more. You know, the pressure is piling on. You know, when do you make that, that decision? When do you either go for the complete left field option? Um, you know, so, you know, he has time, but it's limited time. It is limited time. And actually, we've seen a variety of different play styles throughout this tournament, which is quite surprising. With just four players, um, you can sometimes have very similar play styles happen, especially when it's an invitational. But regardless, we, we dive into this grand final now, but it is going to be both comfort picks. Yeah. Picked by both players. So again, Afrikami immediately trying to shut down that space and running straight into the aggression of Rubs in this opening game. And God, just getting that counter. And here comes the combos. Does drop it there. Phases back immediately. Though long-range leaf blade just to get some damage back 
onto Rubs. Great detect usage as well, getting some nice damage here. Trying to follow up these combos, but drops it. I'm liking this from Afro Kami. He, he notices what went wrong when he played Rubs before, when he was constantly going for those jump attacks. He was being punished by Juggles. Instead, he's going for a lot lower attacks, going for ground attacks now, trying to keep distance, trying to get in on the face of Rubs and not allow those Juggles to happen. Yeah. This poison, little poison rain, it looks like. <laughs> okay. The Chirisu being used there. Just so much damage from Rubs, and Afro Kami just seems to have no answer for it as well. He does able to jump over that. That was really nice substitute. They're using the substitute just to get out of that, 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 that scenario, and now he's following up this combo. Will he, you know, just trying to find a way back in? It's really, really good. Using those burst seeds, or the bullet seeds there, just, just to kind of be interested. Wow, he gets it back! He catches him out on that movement round. Yeah, Afro Kami, he was down very low, but he somehow pulled that one back. A great dodge, a, bait, uh, a great evasion there from Afro Kami to keep in this one. And now he has the lead over Rubs. What I think is really nice about um, the way he kind of did this is that although, you know, when I mentioned that uh, the Bullet Seed does miss that target, kind of drop the combo, they can be great. They're in the ground, you can grow them out and cause, you know, a, a follow up. You know, the pressure is still on. They have to be in garb when they get back up, which is very, very nice. Again, the substitution for the cross up. Then again, the combo coming out from Afro. Kami looking very inspired, very confident now. Rubs once again is down, but Afro Kami trying to do damage, but he unfortunately gets caught again by Rubs. Rubs hasn't had the same juggle ability that we saw earlier on in the winner's bracket, but he is still emitting a crazy amount of damage when he does connect with those shots. Wow, going for that, uh, the, the reverse um, shutdown there, but... Again, the pressure's good, but I think Avrakami is just getting a bit more of that knowledge of the overall spacing he needs to really deal with Darkrai. Rubs is just stuck against this wall here, and damage is just coming in from Avrakami, chipping away. Down to just one HP now, Rubs. Can he avoid it? Uses Burst just to get a little bit of health back here. Does throw some projectiles to try and stay alive, but 17 seconds, 15 seconds, he needs to make the move, but Afrokami is gonna use a burst of his own to try and get back into this one. Try and finish it off, he can't quite find that damage. Yes, I grab it now, this is really important because we do have that, the, the burst stack still available for both players. There he goes, Dry, does he get the catch on him? He goes straight underneath him. The, anyway, currently it's the driving seat in the favor of Rub. Rub's ahead, just one second as well. That should be over, but did he can't find it? No, Afro Kami. Wow. Afro Kami down to one HP, but regardless, time's up anyway. So we are 1-1 one, one in this first game. It's best of three as well, confirmation, okay, confirmation. In, the, in the final. But of course, uh, Rubs, if he wins the best of three, he wins. But Afro Kami will have to win two best of threes to win this grand final. Nice, just catching that movement forward from Rubs' dark right. This seems the polar opposite from what we saw in winner's bracket as well. It seems Rubs was actually going for the jumping aerial attacks and being punished every single time for it. Afro Kami has really switched up his playstyle and Rubs is struggling to actually keep up with it. This is very, very solid work so far from Afro Kami. Gets that grab again. Yeah, he's using this, this detect, just getting, like, finding where he's landing, the general jump arc that, he's, that Rubs is looking for. There's a nice cross-up again, gets behind him, tries to follow up the pressure on the wall, but again, another cross-up immediately from Afro Kami. The HP getting very low, can he take his first game? The wall bounce. A moment of respite, potentially. There's the detecting hang, goes immediately. There's so much pressure on that shield, but the counter coming out from Rubs. The damage is huge. This is said he was down to just one HP. He does manage to regain a little bit, back up to 38 now, and he's well and truly still in this. We've seen it happen before previously in this tournament, but we're down to just 20 seconds as well. And he goes for it, but he should be able to counter he here. And that burst attack. He will gather him up in the vines and finish and seal this first game. Afro Kami taking game one over rubs now i mean of course it's cliche to say it's the perfect start that he needed but it really was if he has any chance of winning this grand final he really needs to take it to rubs here and it seemed like he learned a lot from that winner's bracket final matchup that we saw previously as well he very much knew what the game plan was going to be from rubs he was avoiding those aerial attacks he was keeping a, a nice distance and not jumping himself that was the big thing mm. i saw a lot of aerial attacks in the winner's bracket final coming out from Afro and he was being punished every single time for it. So yeah. he clearly learned his lesson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that adaptation is to know what isn't and what is and isn't working. But our players are back into this next game. Um, so early kind of lead, I guess, for Afro. 
Yeah, Afro getting the early damage in yet again, which is completely opposite to what we saw in the winner's bracket finals. Rubs down to just half HP now, but still Afro can be putting on the pressure. Rubs having to block all these leaves flying here, there, and everywhere at the moment. And he's just running away. Rubs isn't able to go on the front foot, but finally tries to put some damage in on his own. But Afro Kami really has, is in the driving seat. Rubs is going to make an attempt to get back into this game now as well, pulling him in, you know, pressurizing that shield as well. Now facing back with these Dark Spheres. Goes for the, the Dimension Break and gets caught again. Here comes the combo from Afro Kami. Can he get what he needs? The wall bounce into field phase. Umbreon again going to push back and it does, does connect as well and does a good chunk of damage to Afro. Oh, I mean, to be fair, at this point, all it needs is one, one big connection. Doesn't follow up where he needs to. Yeah, Rubs using his HP to his advantage here. He knows Afro Kami's going to be a little bit desperate. He knows he's going to be diving in, but he's constantly blocking, waiting for the right moment to pounce. And there we go. He's down to 16 HP now. Afro Kami, that's well. Comes in. Nice attack. Three. Three HP, but just two seconds left as well. He just needs to stay away, and it should be time up, which it is. And there we have it. Rubs ties this one up, one to one, in this second round. Okay, so round two of this second game now. Well, it's just, I think what we haven't seen as well, I haven't seen too many of these dark metals that we're seeing a lot of. I think it's just because of the ferocity and the speed in which um, Afro is deciding to move now. It's making it harder for Rub to really gain control that he needs to put those zones down. Every time Rub seems to find himself with the back to the, the wall, quite literally here, Afro Kami is clearly going for a game plan as he wants to just trap him and then put in the, the chip damage. But can Rub do exactly what he did last game? He was so far behind, but was able to have a perfect comeback. I'm just catching that moving forward, but the... The burst being used now going into that one, and currently Rubs does not have too much burst meter, which is nice, which means that, that there's a lot of uncontested burst time coming out from Steptile. Conf oh. Just confuses? Conf uh, just pushes himself forward and wins that one with a nice combo, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, nice combo. Now it's 1-1. One, one. That's yes. what I meant. Final that's round. Right, nice I couldn't see the yellow dot on oh, the yeah, side yeah. of the screen. That's but there we have it. Rubs, tied up 1-1. One, one. If Afro Kami takes this, he does reset the bracket and those L's will be coming down on both sides of those player names. And it'll be all to play for there. Rub looking to get back to this grand final and take it before that reset happens. And as you mentioned, Afro really does have that momentum from that loser's run for him. Rubs once again backed off into this wall, but I love that from him. He instantly knows what Afro Kami's trying to do, so he rushes out and makes sure that's not going to happen. And now he's the one on the offensive. He's the one pushing the damage. This is the same Rubs we saw in the winner's bracket, and he's getting that juggle, but he whiffs a little bit. But the Leaf Blade coming out of that counter gets goes for the Detect, finds him, and that command grab happening there. Again, these are these are the uh, bullet seed growth that is kind of causing, even if he does miss, goes for a nice grab there. Darkrai. Good damage, closes down that space, has that gravity shield, just waiting. Afro Kami down to just 98 HP, down to 67. Now Rubs is just having his number, he's avoiding every single leaf that is thrown at him at the moment, and finally dashes in to finish off Afro Kami, and we're tied up at one to one. I am being told, I have confirmation, it's actually going to be a best of five grand final. There will be no bracket reset regardless, so it is just a straight out best of five okay. for this grand final. So that's what we need to see. We need to see one of the teams, one of the players, sorry, win three games and they will move on and they will be the champion here. Yeah. players being told there, so just having to adjust to that change in structure. Of course, live here at EGX, there is time that we have to abide by as well. Before everything closes here, the last thing we would want is players playing in front of an empty crowd. Of course, people here at EGX can come and watch as long as it's still open, of course. So best of five, tied up one to one. And now this is where it comes down to. Who can deal with the pressure better? Is it going to be Rubs or is it going to be Afro Kami? See how it, how it goes. That is going to be a bit of a change uh, to their mindset, of course. You know, that the the conventional things that they're used to in their tournament have been changed. So how does that affect, affect the gameplay? They do get that, that, that best of five, however, which does um, you know, allow them to kind of play 
you know, know that the, this game isn't the be-all and end-all. There is still that second lifeline just in case. But um, Afrokami, taking that first game, a much better bring back from Rub. Bring back, brought back that second game again. Well done by Rub. So, you know, it's good to not go down 2-0 in this scenario. And meanwhile, just look at the amount of damage that Afrokami is putting out onto Rubs again. He keeps pushing him back on into this wall. Can we see any sort of comeback from Rubs? Oh, he gets lifted up in the air, and the damage is there. So nice, yeah, using that retreating um, uh, um, aerial attack into the landing uh, detect. Very, very nice, holding rubs in shield, and then immediately getting that detect grab. Yeah, we need to see something different from rubs here, because Afro Kami really knows the game plan that he's going for. And we know that rubs is capable of a lot with this dark ride. Mm. Detect is really working nicely for Afro Kami here. Again, he's just being pushed back into this wall and attack after attack. The chip damage seems too much for Rubs, and the blocks aren't going in as well as he thought it would. That was a little bit hasty. The shield was already there. He goes for that aerial grab, though, for huge damage from him. This is, again, fantastic for Afro Kami. If he takes it, he will be in pole position. He does 2 0. He takes it 2 1 over Rubs now. And now, what a dramatic turn of events this is. Afro Kami suddenly becomes the favorite for this grand final. 2-1 up, he just needs one more match win to take this whole tournament. But on the side of Rubs, we know he's capable of a lot. We saw how he performed in the winner's bracket. Can he do the same to come back from behind here? A position that, granted, he wouldn't have expected to be in. And I do sympathize that the players have had to change ever so slightly. But sometimes compromises do need to be made and you need to adapt to situations. There is those nettles kind of catching um, Sceptile on the way down, allowing him to extend a little bit more. Grab comes out from Afro Kami to get some nice damage in, takes the HP lead in this early part of the game. Gets another grab out, that pressure again on the wall, really important, shifting faith into dual faith. Immediate detect that push forward from Rubs. Very, very nice from Afro Kami, the bullet seed, the growth, the pressure on the shield. He jumps out and he gets that grab immediately, anti-air that grab. Afro Kami once again is just pushing Rubs all the way away from where he would want to be in the middle of this arena. Instead, he keeps getting forced back to that shield on the back. But now we see Rubs actually putting a little bit of damage. He's got Afro Kami down to half HP. And you can see both players slowing this down a little bit here. Okay, here are the jugglers coming out that we know you've seen them fall. Oh, and there we go, catches just that space above immediately pushes forward and knocks him up into that into the nettles and the pressure now on that shield is important and he gets that catch there okay Rubs. so now we're seeing better stuff from rubs as you said the juggles coming back into play maybe afro coming let his guard down a little bit maybe forgot about the game plan earlier from rubs needs to be careful as we are 1-1 in this fourth match 1-0 sorry in this fourth match no worries no worries no worries <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, Rubs, again, it's back and forth. These consistent, minute adaptations from both players, different approaches that are just causing, you know, this is this is kind of what it looks like. You know, you have these minute changes that make big differences, and both players having to kind of respond to those changes as quickly as they can. Speaking of responses, look at this from Rubs. He's got the juggles once again. Afro Kami down to just 65. Okay, he's back up to 100. Now he's, he's getting a little bit of HP restored. He's instantly yeah. on the back foot. Coming from that burst, he just has that HP restore, yeah. Get, gets, cat, gets caught, catched, caught by the Umbreon again. The Detect comes out. The damage is going to start coming in. He's got a little bit of time left on this burst. Does he get the, uh, the Ultra out? He does not, I think. There it is. Caught, catch, dip, dodged, dived. <laughs> We've seen everything from Rubs in the moment. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Yep, and he's trying to survive here. His Afro Kami's down to just 20 HP. This is completely different from Rubs now. It seems like he's... This is doable now. Look at that up. huge hit. 35, 36, 40 HP. It has the HP lead now. Very doable for Afro Kami. He gets it with one HP remaining. Unreal stuff there. Both players so low, but Afro Kami manages it in the end to tie up this fourth round one to one. If Afro Kami wins this round, he will win the whole grand final. Rubs needs this to survive. This is match point now for Afro Kami. Rubs, after having such a strong lead, having it taken that away from him completely, he goes for that aerial grab again. Nice decision making there. The attack decrease coming into Septile, however. Closes in, very nice. Jumps up, avoids the detect, the gap closer, the grab. 
Afro Kami has the early lead once again. Goes to the burst. He's going to push it, but we see a counter burst from Rubs now. So both of them looking for a little bit of extra damage. They're both being a little bit hesitant here. They don't want to dive in. They don't want to give anything easy away. Of course, Rubs is going to be the one more hesitant. He's got more to lose in this situation. Oh, he get, he, he, that was really, really nice coming out of Afro Kami. Will that be enough, though? That is the question. The burst attack is out. The vines, they grow. They encamp encapsulate and they finish it, Afro Kami! Enough damage taking the grand final set, 3-1 over Rubs. A huge turnaround from that winner's finals where Rubs put Afro Kami in the bin, in the loser's bracket. And Afro brings it all the way back with an incredible burst attack there. Yeah, what a story that is for Afro. Coming back from the loser's bracket, but then still winning in the grand final. Wow, unfortunate for Rubs. Uh, of course, we had a last-minute change as well in the situation. I think both players are friendly enough. They can have a laugh. They can have a joke about it. But regardless, we've seen some excellent pocket here today. I've been extremely impressed. I wonder if the guys on the stage have been extremely impressed. Let's find out from the man himself, Adam Savage. Thank you very much, fellas. We've had our grand final. We have ourselves a winner. Commiserations firstly, though, to Rubs. I'm going to hand you this runner-up trophy there. Commiserations to you. You fought valiantly today. But we do have ourselves a brand new champion. Afro, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling ecstatic. Like, I, I didn't expect to win, but I overcame and won. And how much are you enjoying the brand new Pokémon Tournament DX? Are you loving this on the Switch now? Oh uh, Yeah, I love the game. I enjoy it and I... I want to get the game on the Switch and play online and wreck everyone else online. Just keep on killing. Well, I'm proud to present you with your winning trophy. Would you please make some noise for Afro Kami? He is your Pokken Tournament Champion. Thank you guys so much for watching and to have a wonderful evening. Let's go back over to Dan and to the desk and find out where you guys made it up. Final match of the series. Thank you very much, Adam. Yeah, I mean, what did you make? of that final series then, a great performance from Afro. Yeah, we, we saw I mean, these consistent back and forth adaptations and I just think it was the, those minor ones that um, Afro made in each game to kind of keep taking you know, the rounds that he needed. Uh, the amount of times that he was here had his backs against, so his back, backs, multiple backs? How can you have multiple backs? But his back against the ropes and then just kind of found these little niches where he could just get in and really pressurize rubs. Um, Rubs had control a lot of the time, but I think he didn't have that zone control that he had in that first winner's finals. Yeah. You know, I was mentioning, you know, kind of like locking down options and really kind of just outputting the damage that he needed to. It was really good work from Afro just to kind of open up his response with so many more options. It really was a shame in the end to see Rubs fall, but Afro is going to be the champion of this Pokken Invitational here at EGX, but that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for joining us, of course, from myself, from Bowie, from Adam Savage, from all of the production crew of Nintendo as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time. Take care.